Well, welcome to Mo Health Media. My name is Guy Danoff, and we're bringing to you a very special edition. And I am joined with Dr. Kristen So, the president of the Missouri chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, otherwise known as Mo AAP. So, Dr. Soul, we have to start with first and foremost. Thank you so much for being a guest uh, on our broadcast today. And I wanted to start with uh, what's it been like for you and your role uh, since, the, since the pandemic began? Yeah, well, first, thanks so much for having me. Um, it has definitely been quite the experience as a pediatrician and a leader in pediatric healthcare across the state. It has been quite uh, a 15 months, right? So 15, 16 months. And I can tell you um, just making it through um, with the kiddos that we take care of every day. I'm a, I'm an autism doctor, so I spend most of my time um, diagnosing, evaluating, diagnosing, and taking care of kids on the spectrum. And just the incredible family stories and all of the amazing um, resiliency that I've seen during this time has been amazing, but it's been quite a year. <laughs> so one of the questions I like to ask is, is let our viewers know a little bit of the function of your work and certainly what the Academy does. Absolutely. So um, I am, it's a huge honor to be the president of Mo AAP or the Missouri chapter, American Academy of Pediatrics. So what we do, um, we are a membership organization for professionals, mostly pediatricians of about 1100 uh, pediatricians, pediatric trainees, and other folks that are in the pediatric health, health space. And really our primary work is to essentially um, strive to make sure that kids in Missouri are healthy and well, all related to everything from physical health to mental health to even their educational health. And so as we think about that, that's really what the Mo AAP is all about, so that we can make sure that we are being a voice for children uh, in all the spaces where children exist. So yes, we're doctors, but at the same time, we really are um, you know, constantly partnering with our local legislators, with our state legislators, and then also with each other as we partner across different types of community organizations to help everyone really think about the impact of different decisions on child health. So with that being said, I'd like to ask this question then, what has been some of the successes that you know your organization has had in the last 15 months? Because uh, I've heard this from a lot of leaders and I get the privilege and opportunity to interview you know, lots of leaders of organizations, uh, you know, basically will oversee at the state level Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has been said a lot is that while there's been a lot of disruption, it's also allowed for a lot of opportunity. I was wondering if you could share with us maybe one or two stories of great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I think about where we've been and where we are today um, through this you know, global pandemic, it's absolutely been filled with stories of resiliency and strength, um, both on behalf of pediatricians who are serving their communities, but then also, you know, the ones that we care about, right? So we are pediatricians, and yet what that really means is that we are just absolute lovers of children and their families. And so, you know, I think the pandemic has offered a lot of opportunities for innovation, a lot of opportunities for us to experience um, different ways of doing things. So, for example, I can share with you from my own kind of clinical world, um, I practiced telehealth for the last year and so was able to actually see all of my patients um, as a specialist. People usually drive about two hours um, each way to come and see me for autism, kind of ongoing autism support. And so to be able to offer them telehealth because we now have a reimbursement mechanism for that was huge. So I had families who I could see their pets and I could meet their siblings or they could take me outside and show me their playground or their room or whatever. And that was so awesome and something that we couldn't do before because there were lots of bureaucratic loop, well, not loopholes, but bureaucratic issues related to billing and reimbursement. And so the pandemic offered this great opportunity um, to actually be a part of their family where they are, as opposed to them coming to my clinic, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So that was a real um, honor, really, to be able to do that and to serve in a different way. Uh, so certainly, I think of that as a COVID silver lining. Um, there are many, and there, of course, are many, many challenges. Uh, but one of the ones that as a chapter that I'm really proud of is uh, something that we call COVID-19 and Kids Echo. So one of the things that we know um, from a 
community standpoint. So as pediatricians, right, we're pretty up on all of the COVID stuff. I, I like to tease people, though, that it feels like I needed to go back and get a degree in COVID-19 so that I could just keep up with all of the stuff coming out. Um, but nevertheless, right, so we are we help families make decisions every day, um, whether that be to get this vaccine, not get this vaccine, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, um, you know, whatever, whatever the decision might be. And we've always had the privilege of being in that type of um, role with families. So as the pandemic progressed and schools were, you know, getting back, trying to figure out what they were going to do um, going back in the fall and things like that, we as a chapter, so again, 1200 pediatricians is who, who our chapter represents or who I represent as part of the chapter. We thought, well, you know, we need a source of opportunity for people to come together and really think through tough decisions. And, you know, in our state, I'm, I'm proud to be from Missouri and the fact that we make tough decisions that are locally owned and locally controlled, if you will. Uh, and yet sometimes it can be really confusing about who's whose safety, wellness, what have you, is kind of in the top priority. So this COVID-19 and Kids Echo is for leaders in all of our communities from all across uh, Missouri. So it's for school leaders, uh, school administrators, school board, um, board members, as well as pediatricians, family physicians, nurse practitioners, and our local health departments. And so um, essentially, it's a structured opportunity to come together and hear from experts, but then also ask questions and think about tough tough answers. Um, because I think one thing I'm pretty known for saying is that, you know, nobody has lived through a novel pandemic um, unless you're, you've are you been around for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's really challenged all of us to think about how do we need each other um, in community. And so I know that some of the coolest stories have come about because of the relationships that have been built between the healthcare system, so doctors and uh, teacher or school nurses in particular, but then also school administrators. This afternoon, I'm actually meeting with our district superintendent for the first time. Um, we've developed a friendship through COVID-19 and kids, and we've actually never met. And so today, we're actually going to meet in person um, because we're both vaccinated. And uh, you know, that's a really great um, you know, that we're both huge. He's a superintendent and I'm, you know, of a very large school district. And so we're having a lot of fun just thinking about different ways to co you know, collaborate and, and things like that. So it's been really fun to be able to, to serve and support our communities um, in this way. Absolutely. And with that, I understand that um, you're putting on a new webinar coming up on June 22nd. It's for an hour and maybe you could tell everyone what this webinar, who's the audience, you know, and what can they expect and why do they need to be at this webinar? Absolutely. So this webinar is going to be really important. So we know that even though the pandemic currently is kind of in a, um, we see improvements and we're excited about everybody being able to get out and do more things now that a lot of people are being vaccinated. There's still so many things to think through. So this webinar is going to be great. We're going to be releasing our toolkit for schools, for school health in particular, uh, really helping to support our school nurses and our school leaders in how they think about COVID and keeping children safe as we go back into school this fall. Hopefully this uh, trend in our uh, in our numbers of, of infections will stay low and we will continue to be able to be able to kind of go back or start a new normal as I think about it. Um, but this webinar is gonna be a great opportunity to hear from infectious disease, pediatric infectious disease experts, as well as a physician who is an emergency room physician, pediatric emergency room physician, and then also a pediatric primary care um, pediatrician as well. So as we really think about how do we continue to just advance the health and well-being of kids? I think this webinar is going to be great. It's going to talk about vaccines. It's going to talk about vaccine safety, um, talk about the different options that are available for children currently, and then what that might look like going into the future. Um, I can guarantee you we will also be thinking about all of those lovely myths and rumors that are going on around um, vaccines and, and how do we make decisions for kids and things like that. And so we at the American Academy of Pediatrics Missouri chapter, you know, obviously, we've seen the lives saved from vaccines for decades and decades and decades and we know how effective vaccines are at keeping kids safe and yet we also completely understand that it's always tough to make decisions for your child and for mm -hmm. yourselves um, that are new and so i think this will be a wonderful webinar that people can come and hear from experts um, about the current information that we have what evidence is out there and uh, how do we keep moving children and their families forward 
So with that, in case you're viewing, you can actually take a screenshot of the bit.ly. There's not too many characters there. So if you want to register, you can register literally right now. Yeah. Uh, I know the registration will, will be going all the way up until probably five minutes before the webinar uh, starts. At least that's the way we usually do them. So yeah. that's going to be a great way. It's right there for you. And then the next thing is the last thing I wanted to share. And, and uh, you know, Dr. Sol, if you can tee this up. Yeah. is we're really big at Missouri Healthy Schools by offering resources to the people who watch our content. And I was wondering if maybe you could speak to this website and why some people might want to go to it. Absolutely. So if, if any of you are listening and want to join in in the learning around that we do twice a month on COVID-19 and kids, you're welcome to join us. You know, again, what you're going to hear on those um, COVID-19 and kids echoes is a lot of, of leaders grappling with tough decisions, you know, thinking through how do we make sure that not only healthy children stay stay healthy and well, but also there may be teachers who have underlying health issues or maybe um, a child who has really significant issues. But what I can assure you is that it's a place where we come together respectfully and we think about the issues kind of all the way around. And we really have worked hard since um, September of 2020 uh, to make sure that this ECHO is a place where people can come and feel like they can get their tough questions discussed and also seek answers. Because it's really all about supporting leaders and how we can support and, and maintain our communities. You know, um, Missouri is an amazing place to live. I've been here for a long time. My family's from Missouri. And, you know, sometimes I think that we have to show each other, not just show me, right, but show each other <laughs> um, and help each other to think through really tough things. And so I have loved being able to be alongside school leaders, again, local health department leaders, and then obviously fellow pediatricians who I'm I tend to spend a lot of time with, but really getting a chance to, to work across all of those uh, settings has been amazing. So you can go to this website and learn all about it. All right. So here's our last question. And okay. this one's a little on the personal side. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, here's the question. So I'll usually, actually even call you Kristen for this one. That's fine. <laughs> so, so Kristen, what have you learned professionally that has helped you develop and grow during the pandemic that's getting you ready for the next school year? Got it. So that's a great question. I have learned so much during the last year that it's it's honestly very surreal to look back and just think about what needed to just take place um, in the last year. So I think the most important thing that I've learned is um, and relearned in a lot of ways is that you can't do things alone. Right. Nothing like a global pandemic to remind you that no matter how much you try, no matter how hard you work, you cannot do things by yourself. And the pandemic, I think, and as I as I start to you know prepare my own daughter to go back to, to school and I help lots and lots of kids, especially kids on the spectrum, thinking about schools and school you know, decisions. I think that's the most important thing that I've learned is this power of collaboration. You know, and I, I think that the other thing I would say. Um, along with the power of collaboration in this pandemic has also been trust um, because it's really tough when it's this scary and nobody knows exactly what's going on and you're not sure from one minute to the next who you're supposed to listen to. It can be really difficult um, for all of us, right? Me included, um, to figure out who am I supposed to listen to? Um, and so that's certainly been something uh, where I've leaned in to building new relationships, building new collaborations and trying to better understand not only myself, but then also everyone else, right? Because what I know is as humans, we all are trying to do what's best for, you know, honestly our families, but then we have to keep in mind that that's, you know, we don't live in a vacuum. And so really thinking about how do we do that and how do we stay consistent with our own values? And then also how do we try to take our next best step forward? So that's something I like to think about a lot is what's my next best step, right? And nothing like, again, nothing like a pandemic to teach you that, boy, <laughs> you don't know as much as you think you do. <laughs> so uh, it's been one heck of a year, and I'm thankful that we're starting to see some easing up of the, the numbers. And I'm certainly thankful that we have a vaccine now that looks to be working and that looks to be keeping um, those that are vaccinated safe. So I'm very much looking forward to a brighter fall. Uh, and again, though, got to remember that a lot of kids, so every child under the age of 12 still can't be protected in those ways. And so again, thinking about collaboration, thinking about trust, thinking about how do we all as you know, humans figure out how do we take those next best 
steps forward um, continues to be on my mind uh, pretty much every minute of every day. Wow. Well, thank you for going off the, you know, just right off the cuff. Uh, <laughs> anyone who's ever interviewed with me before kind of knows I like to throw in what I call I the, the zag, if you would, because I, you know what? We're all learning. I mean, you know, and, and it's funny you were talking earlier about, you know, all the things that you're learning because of the COVID. Well, imagine being in my shoes where you're part of the media and you're trying to get all this information out. You know, um, so I just want to just give a plug to uh, Missouri Healthy Schools and Dr. Soul. We want to thank you for coming on today. And we're certainly looking forward to there it is again that date, your upcoming webinar on June 22nd. And again, if you want to take that quick screenshot, there it is. Go ahead and register. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you again for taking the time and uh, want to encourage you to continue to lead the way in all the work that you're doing as part of the uh, Missouri chapter of the Association of Pediatrics. So with that, uh, we will see you next time. Excellent. Thank you so much. Everybody stay healthy and well. See you soon. All right. For Dr. Soul, I am Guy Duff. I want to thank you for watching this edition of Mo Health Media. Awesome. Thank you.